1972, a cinematic portrayal emerged chronicling the pivotal moments leading to the birth of a nation. 1776 brought to life the impassioned debates and struggles that shaped America's history, focusing on the forging of the Declaration of Independence. This historical drama navigates the tension, fervor, and complexities of a defining moment in time, offering a window into the minds and personas of those who shaped the country's destiny. The film's enduring appeal lies in its ability to humanize these historical figures, depicting their conflicts, aspirations, and the weighty decisions that define their legacy. As for lesser-known anecdotes, the extensive research undertaken to capture the essence of the era remains a fascinating aspect, allowing a glimpse into the meticulous efforts behind the scenes. What makes 1776 a lasting emblem of the industry is its portrayal of the human side of history, transcending mere dates and events to offer insight into the individuals who played pivotal roles. Their passions, flaws, and unwavering determination are painted vividly, ensuring the film's relevance beyond its time of creation. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below, we'd love to hear them. The movie 1776, released in 1972, holds some intriguing behind-the-scenes stories. Director Peter H. Hunt initially hesitated to cast Howard Da Silva as Benjamin Franklin due to the actor's past difficulties. Yet, Da Silva eventually reprised his role from the Broadway show after promising to cooperate and for the sake of leaving a legacy for his grandchildren. Rex Everhart, Da Silva's understudy, could have taken the role, known notably for voicing Morris in Beauty and the Beast. Everhart's recording for the original Broadway cast album stands as a comparison to Da Silva's performance. The signing of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, depicted in the musical, contrasts with historical records that only John Hancock signed on that day. Writers Edwards and Stone altered the timeline for dramatic effect. Controversy surrounds a claim about President Richard Nixon's reaction to the song Cool, Considerate Men. While some state Nixon found it critical of his presidency, evidence contradicts this, pointing to a different viewing at the White House. Regardless, the song was later restored in subsequent releases of the film. These anecdotes shed light on the casting, historical liberties, and alleged presidential reactions behind the scenes of 1776, adding depth to the movie's production. Filming the 1972 movie took place at what is now the Warner Ranch using some recognizable spots. One, the water fountain scene in the Lees of Old Virginia is known as the Friends Fountain today. It's located just across from sets used in Bewitched, and I dream of Genie. Unfortunately, a fire in the mid-70s destroyed most of the other colonial sets. One intriguing aspect of the film's portrayal is John Adams being deemed obnoxious and disliked by his peers in the Continental Congress. However, according to David McCullough's Pulitzer Prize-winning biography John Adams, none but Adams himself spoke negatively of him. The written recollections from other Congress members praised Adams. Another interesting detail involves Ron Holgate's performance in the Lees of Old Virginia. Despite never having been on a horse before, Holgate did all his riding except for a trick mount at the end. These behind-the-scenes tidbits give an interesting look into the making of the movie, from the filming locations to the portrayal of historical figures, providing added depth to the production. The movie 1776, known for its portrayal of historical figures, includes many actual quotes from these men, like John Hancock justifying his signature and Benjamin Franklin's famous lines about liberty and unity. William Daniels, who played John Adams, also portrayed John Quincy Adams in a series and gained recognition as the voice of Kit in Knight Rider. Interestingly, a commentary reveals that a quote by John Adams on slavery's removal was omitted for sounding too prophetic about future trouble, coincidentally close to the Civil War. These insights deepen our understanding of the movie's authenticity and the actors involved, offering intriguing connections to history and their subsequent careers. The final shot of the Congressional Chamber needed a wide view, but the set didn't allow for it. To solve this, they made a hole in the wall for the camera truck. Even though the set was meant to be torn down, it wasn't, so they had to rebuild the wall afterward. A late addition to the Broadway show was the song The Egg, inspired by a poster Sherman Edwards saw. It showed with an eaglet breaking out of a British eggshell holding an American flag. All the talks between John and Abigail Adams were from their real letters. He called her his dearest friend, signing off with Till Then. 
In the portrayal of the 1776 events, the movie touches on intriguing historical accuracies. Thomas Jefferson's recording of hourly temperatures during the Congress sessions in real life aligns with his depiction in the film, where he shares the outside temperature upon request, coinciding with the highest recorded temperature on July 4, 1776, being 76 degrees. Moreover, the Congress's timeline for adopting Virginia's resolution on July 2 and approving the Declaration's language on July 4 stands as a factual representation within the movie's narrative. Benjamin Franklin's academic titles, primarily being referred to as doctor in the film, were predominantly honorary, stemming from his scientific contributions, such as honorary masters and doctorates from esteemed universities, acknowledging his scientific endeavors. These historical accuracies embedded in the movie offer a glimpse into the meticulousness of Thomas Jefferson's records, the chronological sequence of events in Congress, and Benjamin Franklin's academic recognition, lending an authenticity to the portrayal of these historical figures. In the making of this historic depiction, intriguing details emerge. Jefferson's stance on slavery in the Declaration of Independence isn't fully reflective of his personal actions. While he resolved to free some slaves, in reality, only a few were emancipated upon his death. A seemingly warm scene during Piddle, Twiddle, and Resolve was quite the opposite William Daniels sipped on ice cubes to hide the chilly weather. And there's an unexpected star in the street scene, a pig known from Green Acres director Peter H. Hunt humorously highlights the pig's diva-like behavior, waiting to emerge last from its air-conditioned trailer. These lesser-known insights add layers to the film's creation, revealing quirks behind the scenes. In the song Is Anybody There, John Adams sings the lyric yet, through all the gloom, I see the rays of ravishing light and glory taken directly from a letter he wrote to his wife Abigail the day after the declaration was adopted. This poignant inclusion adds a personal touch to Adam's character, revealing his emotions in the aftermath of a pivotal historical moment. Charles Thompson, the Secretary of the Continental Congress, served throughout its existence until its disbanding in 1789. Surprisingly, he was not offered a position in the newly formed government after the ratification of the U.S. Constitution. Despite his close friendship with Thomas Jefferson until his death in 1824 at the age of 94, Thompson's absence from the new government sheds light on the complexities of the post-revolutionary era. The 1972 movie 1776 holds significance as the final film produced by Jack L. Warner, a naturalized American citizen who considered it a gift to his adopted country. This unique perspective adds a layer of sentiment to the film, marking the end of an era in Warner's cinematic contributions. These behind-the-scenes facts, drawn from historical letters and the life of Charles Thompson, along with Warner's personal connection to the film, offer a deeper understanding of the 1972 movie 1776, showcasing how real-life events and personalities influenced its portrayal on the big screen. As we bid adieu to the timeless tale of a nation's birth, our minds resonate with the echoes of 1776. This cinematic masterpiece, a captivating journey through the struggles and triumphs of our forefathers, stirs the very core of our patriotic spirit. The characters, like ink on parchment, have etched themselves into the tapestry of our collective memory. As you reflect upon the narrative, consider the threads that bind you to this compelling narrative. Perhaps it's the raw emotion in the performances, the poignant musical compositions that reverberate through time, or the visceral connection to a pivotal chapter in history. Whatever it may be, your personal relationship with 1776 adds another layer to the rich fabric of its impact. We encourage you to share your musings, your cherished recollections, and the nuances that make this cinematic journey uniquely yours. Let the dialogue flow like a spirited debate in the hallow wood halls of independence. Engage with fellow enthusiasts, kindred spirits who've also found solace and inspiration in the celluloid chronicles of rebellion. Your thoughts are the quill that continues to script the legacy of 1776 in the annals of our shared cultural consciousness. So whether you raise a metaphorical quill or a modern keyboard, let your voice join the chorus of those who've been moved by this cinematic marvel. Thank you for embarking on this reflective expedition with us. Your time and engagement are the kindling that keeps the flame of appreciation burning bright. Until our next exploration into the realms of cinematic wonder, stay inspired and keep those discussions alive. Farewell for now.